I had a meeting with the dean of students, and she she just wanted to know, well, how did it go? I said, I really enjoyed it. But I said, let me share some things that the students are telling me. And I told her, I said, well, when it came to time management, a lot of students felt that, you know, when you talk about the type of students that you all get, some of them come and they don't even think they're college material. Some of them have fear of failure, a lot of them do. But when they come into an environment and they see a person just doing enough to get by, meaning the professor, because a lot of the students say, I came to college thinking that math would be more challenging than high school was. But then when I walk into a room and someone's just putting dittles on the table and telling the students, here's something else to do, and, and, and not doing any teaching, and then you give a test or a quiz and you wonder why you, they're not passing the way that you want them to pass, you have to look at your commitment, your commitment to your crime. You have to look at how dedicated and committed are you. And see that, when I talk about just enough and just a job, that's what happens. So when you look at your time management throughout the day, how effective are you? Or are you someone who's always busy and tied up in knots? The next thing, student perception. Some of us sometimes, when it comes to student perception, we can have a bad experience with one student or a group of students and all of a sudden that becomes the perception that we blanket everyone with. And all of a sudden you start hearing the negative attitude, well these kids, they all of them come, come to class, they're unprepared or they, 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 won't, they don't take education serious and everybody is blanketed with that. But like they say, what you think becomes your reality. And you have to understand that not every student is not prepared. Not every student does not like education. I mean, there's, there's still some that are amongst the group that want education. They want you to challenge them. They want you to teach them. They want you to help them to succeed. Let me ask anyone, what, what business are you in? Anyone? Education. Say again? Education. Education, okay, that's a good answer. What business are you in? Any other answer? Customer service. Customer service, good answer. Serving students. Serving students, good, another good answer. Yes? Growth. Growth, another good answer. What business are you in? Yes? Information. Information, another good answer. But you also have to embrace the concept and the theory. You all are in the business of saving lives. It's that serious today. You not only have traditional students who are coming from high school, but you have, you have adults who have been laid off from work. You have adults who decided to resign a job just so they can come to Claremont to get more education so that they can take better care of their families. See, that's why I say all those other answers were great. They were good. They were dead on. But you have to take it as serious as you're in the business of saving lives. Because each and every student you can connect with, you can help, you can service, give quality customer service to, you help them and their families. When I spoke down at Allegheny Community College, I did, like I said, I did four sessions. And I remember after my first session, a young lady came up to me. And she said, Mr. Howard, do you have an extra copy of your book? So I said to myself, okay, well, I gave away one book in each session for a volunteer that came up front. She said, I need your book. So I'm looking at the young lady, and I said, well, I only had two more books for the second half of the day. She said, no, you gotta hear my story. She said, at the age of 16, I got locked up for prostitution and, and drugs. She said, I, I, I got out of jail about a year and a half ago. A part of my agreement with my parole officer is I would go back to school, get my GED. She said, I did that. Now I'm here at Allegheny Community College because I want to take myself further. And I looked at this, this young lady because I thought this was a person who was like 27 to 30 years old. She was only 19. 
That's why I say we're in the business of saving lives. Because I gave her the book. I told her here. And I hope it helps you. But that's how serious it is now, Dave. When I'm speaking at a high school, and a guidance counselor comes up to me after the presentation and says, the young lady that kept running her mouth through your session, you know, she's 15 years old, she lives on her own, she has a, you know, she has a two-year-old child. That's why I say we're in the business of saving lives. These people today, the students that we care about, we, you, I hope we all care about them, they're coming to school with more than a backpack and a notebook. I mean, a lot of them are a part of the Maury generation. Who's my baby daddy? Some of them don't know. Some of them are coming out of foster care programs where they've aged out, and here they are. But some of them are even coming from well-off families, too, but with their own challenges and issues. But that's why you have to know that student perception means a lot. You have to believe in them sometimes just to convince them to believe in themselves. 